Thanks very much, uh, Jim. Back to the business at hand. Tonight, we are coming to you from just outside Boston. We're about 20 minutes north in the suburb of Wilmington, Massachusetts. Beautiful aerial on a gorgeous night in the hub. Been a terrific weekend weather-wise. We bring you back into the Shriners Auditorium built in 1968. Tonight, the debut of professional boxing here. And coming up next, our main event, the WBA Super Middleweight Championship. Fabulous Frankie Lyles versus undefeated, number one rated, yet relatively unknown, Byron Mitchell. Well, when Frankie Lyles knocked out Tim Littles in a wild, free-swinging punch-out that included arguably the best round and number one knockout of 1996, he seemed destined for stardom. Since then, lackluster and infrequent performances have held him back. Longevity alone does not constitute a great fighter. Now Lyles takes an introspective look at his career and shares his plans for the future. See, they like to see someone go in there and, and just, to, just bang it out. And that's not my style of fighting. So I'm probably still very, very underrated, even though I've been a champion now for five years. So I'm probably still an underrated champion. But I don't let it get to me. I always said that I'm, it never bothered me what people said or feel about me. A lot of those people never put on a glove or anything like that before. They don't know what we go through. I've seen so many people come and go. I turned professional in 88, at the end of 88, to now we're in like 99. And so many guys have come and gone, you know, before me. So and it just, it makes me kind of look, look look like a dinosaur, so to speak. You know what I mean? It's, I'm like the last of the Mohegans. There's not very many of us left. But it's like, well, I'm only one step away, one step away. I want to end my career with the explanation, you know, an explanation point. And that's the, the big money fight, the super fight with a Roy Jones or one of the other uh, reigning champions. That's how I like to do it. Because a lot of times what happens, you're usually this close to something, and you know what I mean? And you don't really see it, but it's just right there. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it, and I think it's not that far away. So while success hasn't eluded Frankie Lyles, after all, he is a world champion, the recognition he garners outside boxing circles is another story while he hopes to punctuate his career with big money fights against world champions father time waits for no one if frankie lyles has any intention of uh, increasing his public recognition and elevating the mark he'll leave on boxing the time is now we return to bobby chez once again bobby why hasn't the public embraced frankie lyles is it the the erratic schedule his his style um what do you think well, I don't think he's fought often enough for starters. When you're out of the, you know, you're out of sight, you're out of mind. You know, people just kind of forget about you. At the same time, when he fights, he's a very smart boxer who doesn't like to mix it up if he doesn't have to. He's not exciting in that fashion, and that's what fans love. They love action. Well, and I think if he if he wants to gain more recognition, he's got to move up and wait and fight uh, Roy Jones Jr. Even if he looks good in defeat, he'd probably get more recognition that way than he has his entire career. Let's get your keys to victory. Sure. Being a southpaw, he used that right jab. He's got to establish an effective jab. Use his big right hook. That's his big weapon. And Ty Mitchell up on the inside. He doesn't like to fight there. Here we've seen with Tim Littles. Tim Littles back to us. He's going to slip a straight left by Frankie. Duck, duck to the right to counter. But what happens? Frankie beats him to the punch with his signature punch. The big right hook. This is how he has to use that hook. Use it on the counter on the inside. Littles is all but out there. Here's Mitchell. Great straight right hand. That's what he's got to use. Work on the inside. Don't let Lyles tie him up and go to the body hard. Slow him down. Here he's going to use a double jab. More of a feeler type of jab. Just a quick pecker. Just it looks out there. A little light. Pecking with the jab. And then a big straight right hand against Garland here, who's also a southpaw. So he doesn't use a strong jab. He just kind of pecks it and leaves it out there just as a range finder. But that right hand is dangerous, and he needs to do that, Steve. All right, Bobby, here is the challenger, hard-hitting Byron Mitchell, number one contender, according to the WBA, despite a totally unrecognizable ring record. While relatively unknown, he's undefeated in 19 fights, 15 by KO, including 11 in the first, 14 of his 15 KOs in three or less. Has a five-fight knockout streak with four in round one. Here he comes. But only three opponents had winning records when they fought Mitchell. Several of his opponents can't even be found in the ring record book. He KO'd the same opponent in the first round twice. That opponent was 0-13. Another guy was 1-19 and on and on. The southpaw style posing problems in the amateurs for Mitchell, but 
He figured things out in the pros. Lyles is a southpaw with a heavy right. Mitchell's chin never really tested. So those are all things that have to be factored in. And Ferdy, we saw what happened last month when an unknown with questionable credentials knocked out the champ in 41 seconds. Are we looking at deja vu all over again? Well, that's what you really can't tell. That's what's so great about boxing. That's why I love boxing so much. You think, well, we can see that again, but then it never happens again. Or the contrary to that, you think, wow, two times in a row, and it can happen two times in a row. This guy can bang. I mean, you looked at the tapes, I looked at the tape, he can bang. He has some mistakes going, and he's going against a veteran. It's not going to be easy to clock Frankie Lyles. Frankie Lyles not going to stand still get hit by those cannon shots of his. But on the other hand, Frankie has had a long layoff. Frankie's had surgery. Frankie is at the 35-year point and starting to wear out, and his last appearances have not been very impressive. So he's ripe. Will this kid take it? Will he go out and steal a buy from, from the window a sill? Well, that's what makes boxing so darn good to watch. You just don't know. And the champion, Frankie Lyles, his eighth defense, won the belt in his first title shot back in 94 over Steve Little. Seven title defenses include wins over Michael Nunn, a war with Tim Littles to avenge his only loss. But he, he hasn't fought since April of 98. That's about 14 months when he outpointed Andrei Shkalikov. He, he hadn't fought nine months prior to that. But a torn right rotator cuff, the reason for his latest layoff, he says it's fully healed. Bobby, here's a guy he's fought only four times in the past three and a half years. Will the inactivity catch up to him? You know, layoffs can always be hurtful, especially at the age of 34. He's going to be 35 years old soon. That's a big, big layoff, 14 months at that age, for his body to not be working and staying right. The rust factor, I'm sure it's going to be there. I expect him to start this fight slow and work himself back into it. A lot of guys try and do the work in the gym, but it's nothing like fight night. The adrenaline, the timing, everything's different, small gloves. Certainly, it's going to be a factor. How big, we'll find out in just a few minutes. And as mentioned, nearly a decade older than Mitchell, plus rumors of muscle problems. That is the tale of Frankie Lowes as he makes his way into the ring. Let's size him up. We check out the tale of the tape. And yes, the biggest disparity is the age. Lyle's nine years older than Mitchell. Two and a half inch height advantage for the champion. Both right at the 168 limit and a two inch reach advantage for Lyle. And the key Massachusetts rules for this world title fight. There is a standing eight count. Three knockdown rule is in effect. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round. Accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth. The fight is a technical draw. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. So here at the Shriners Auditorium in Wilmington, Mass, we're getting ready for our main event. It's the WBA Super Middleweight Championship. Frankie Lyles versus Byron Mitchell. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Shriners Auditorium here in Wilmington, Massachusetts for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Don King Productions and Showtime Championship Boxing. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association. The president, Gilberto Mendoza, supervisor, Victor Callejas, along with the Massachusetts State Boxing Commission. The chairman is Mark DeLuca. Positions at ringside, Dr. Patty Yofi, Dr. Leonard Weiss. Timekeeper at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, we have Mickey Finn. Introducing to you our judges, scoring this bout from ringside, Vinnie Lee, Bob McCoy, and Don O'Neill. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the greater Boston area, it's showtime! And introducing to you our referee in charge of this, our main event, Jerry Leone. Introducing to you, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger fighting on my right out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with gold trim, and joining us from Ozark, Alabama. 
He weighed in at the super middleweight limit of 168 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 19 wins, no losses, and 15 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the WBA number one super middleweight contender, you, introducing the challenger, Byron Mitchell. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion. On my left, fighting out of the red corner, he is wearing white trunks with blue lettering and fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He weighed in the same weight as his opponent, 168 pounds even. His record stands at 32 wins. One loss, one no contest with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the eighth defense of his title. Here is the defending WBA super middleweight champion of the world, introducing fabulous Frankie Lyle. Once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Jerry Leone. You've received your instructions prior to coming into the ring. A few reminders. Listen to my commands. I won't have to touch you if you listen to my commands. It's the way I like it. Respect the bell. Don't hit on or after the break. If I say stop, stop and listen to my commands. Keep the punches up. 12 round championship bout. Good luck to both of you. Tall, rangy, awkward, southpaw Frankie Lyles. Not a particularly fast starter, more of a, a workmanlike style. Very patient, a cool pro, slick, smooth technician, but also has the power. Big punch is the right hook. Byron Mitchell says, well, you'll have to get by me first if you want to get to Roy Jones Jr., which is what Frankie Lyles told us he really wants. Mitchell, good-looking physical specimen, well-defined washboard type stomach former golden gloves champion one year away from a degree in sports medicine and nutrition at northern michigan university very strong and fast also with a with a powerful right sledgehammer right you can expect a big time chess match right here early yeah early although he said nothing bothers him with left hand nothing bothers him with left handers he's beaten three although two of them dropped him, so he had some trouble yeah, he was floored twice by left-handers, came back to knock out both. He was 0-3, though, against southpaw Antonio Tarver in the amateurs and wanted to offer a big thank you to Tarver for uh, getting him ready. Feels That's the heck of a thank you. Yeah, well, he said it was a learning experience and it, it, it helped him. He feels the key will be his speed. Yeah, he said, too, he said it's clearly he has to nullify Lyles' is right hook. He said, that's the big weapon, that's the bomb. If he can nullify that, that could be a heck of a fight. He calls Lyles basically a one-handed fighter, the right hand, and you can't really argue with that. But he says to neutralize the right just when he thinks I'll go away from it, I'll go the other way. He says, bottom line, I'm faster. Well, we'll see. Uh, he's nine years younger. He should be faster. But he may not be as clever. Lyles tore his supra-stenitis tendon in the Shkalikov fight. That's a fancy way of saying rotator cuff on the right side. Said he was in denial for a while, plus an x-ray didn't reveal anything. Finally had uh, arthroscopic surgery in July. Do you think it could still pose a problem, Ferdy? No, I don't. I, I think that should be well, well healed. I mean, he took a long time. He took good physiotherapy. It's not a big, that's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Not a big he's big training deal. since January, lightly moving in lightly. He's had plenty of time to yeah. test it, get it right, make it strong. He told us that he feels Mitchell is not a threat. He says, I'm prepared. I've been training, as Bobby said, since uh, the start of the year. The fact that Mitchell hasn't gone far in fights makes no difference. I'll just fight my fight, says Frankie. I'll tell you what, that was a pretty effective straight left hand Frankie Lyles threw. And he's hit him two or three times with that left hand, Bobby. It's not the first time that landed in this fight. He, he's already hit him two or three times with that. That was the first power one that landed. There it is again. Big left hook by Frankie Lyles. He is a natural right-hander. He has powered both hands. Is the right hook. Frank Lyle's fighting a little faster pace than normal. He's usually a little more settled, a little more boxing, not as much banging. Here he's bang. trying to make a statement. Combination to the head by Frankie Lyles. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and he gets Mitchell all riled and run, and he's pitching bombs. 
The only difference is his aren't landing. Oh, there's another right hook that landed by Frankie Lyles right off the neck. Good opening round for the champion. All right, nice work, Frankie. Okay, Frankie, look here. We're, we're doing fine. Establish, still establish the jab. Don't don't get away from the jab. Still establishing the jab, okay? Just double up on it sometime, okay? Use a little small feint, then drop a solid left hand on it, okay? And right behind that is the hook. Now, one thing, when he starts rushing into you, throw the quick one, two, one, two, and a three, okay? One, two, and a three. Okay. But you work on the plan. You know we're trying to set up the big hook, right? We got to roll under. Don't stand straight up, understand? We got to roll under, go to his body, and pressure. We're too far outside. We got to suck his titty, man, get inside, understand? And go to the body. Not that wide, just short punches, huh? right? Right in the short inside. Okay. That's your, your kind of corner round, Bobby. Come on, bro. Okay. Tight defense. Better call it like it is. Well, you and me. <laughs> That's Jimmy Williams with two M's, not the Boston Red Sox manager who spells it with one M with some uh, interesting language there in the corner. Yeah, English language is subtle. Round two. Well, in round one, the champ showed little signs of ring rust. Hasn't fought in more than a year. Keep that in mind. And, and he showed a little, what he ne never shows before, a little urgency. Well, I want to get in here and get this thing out. He, he usually is so slow, three or four rounds of go by with nothing. He, he fought a pretty good first round for Mitchell, him. Mitchell showed a pretty good chin, too. He, got, he caught a couple of those left hands right down the pipe, right in the button, no reaction. A couple of the right hooks to the ear side of the head, no reaction. What he's not doing, though, he's not working behind the jab. He needs to use that little feeler, the jab. The jab he puts out there, he pecks with it, but he uses it as a range finder and fires the right hand. He needs to throw two or three of those out there to close the gap and get that right hand home. That and as his corner said, go to the bottom. Yeah, and, and the way he said it, he's, yeah, to, to get in so close, well, he's not close. And that's why nothing is working for him. He's got to get in close. He's got to follow that jab in close. He's got to get into this guy. But as soon as he gets close, there goes the legs. Uh, Frankie, and he gets out of trouble. Mitchell trying to fight on the inside. He says that's the strongest asset of his game. Reaches out with a short, crisp right that that got Lyles right on the face. Left-right combination by Lyles, effective, and a straight right hand by Lyles. Something that uh, you want to notice, too, that right now, Mitchell seems to be able to dictate which way they move. He's moving his left stronger than Frankie. He's moving to his right, so Frankie, although he's talking with that left hand. A thunderous left attack from Mitchell puts Lyles down. What a turn of events. Big right hand. Frankie never saw it. Never saw it. The lights went out. A countering hit right by Byron Mitchell at the 138 mark of round two. It's not the first time Frankie Lyles has been down. It's the fourth time in his career. Well, I said this kid can punch. You just saw it. He can punch. You notice they're stepping on each other's feet, too, a couple times now. Well, the southpaw style of Frankie Lyles causing that awkwardness. Well, this kid is patient because he should be swarming. He's got, he had a champion down. He's not in good shape, and he doesn't swarm over him. And he's certainly got 42 seconds to go. Plenty of time to go work. To leave a calling card to when he goes back. He remembers second round. Off. Well, let's see how Frankie Lyles responds, and he responds well, going to the head with left-right combinations. Frankie Lyles punches, though, Steve. They seem to be lackluster. They don't seem to have any zipping. I was going to say, he's punching with nothing. He's punching it. His arms are going out there with feathers on the end of it. But he fights with uh, a lot of heart. He does have ring savvy. He's trying to recover, get a second win here, as he was stunned earlier in the round. Well, this kid will never have another good opportunity like that unless he lands again. He had him where he wanted. We've seen Lyles in trouble before, and he's come back to win, so. Well, he blew that 10-8. Get a big It's all right. All right, that's a way to work. All right. Here you see Frankie Lyles with his, on the right-hand side. He throws a nice straight left, but as he's backing up, he gets caught right on the top of the head. Never saw the punch, and the second one, <laughs> and the third one almost got him while he was flat down from the overhead. Frankie lands a nice straight left, which was already ahead of us, and that right hand on the head. Top of the head's a very soft, softest part of your head, and it hurts. There's the straight left he landed, right down the pipe. 
but he didn't protect himself on the top of his head. I don't know why he just bent over like that. I think he got hit right before he bent over. There was a little punch. It wasn't much, but it's, something happened to him because he collapsed on that. He went over, and then he got hit with a punch on top of the head. Uh, you know, he, he got hit a sneaky punch, but he was in big trouble, Bobby, big trouble. This guy should have swarmed, should have really taken it to him. Well, after the respite, we'll see if there's uh, a little more zip and sting in Lyle's punches, which was uh, not the case uh, after he got knocked down. Well, he, he is a good, good champion. He's a guy that He's resilient. Back. He's resilient. Don't, don't look for him to fade here because of this. Let's not forget, too, we're looking at a fighter in Mitchell, good as he is and good as he appears to be, has never been past eight rounds. That might be in the back of his mind, too, that he may have to save some energy for late rounds, for championship rounds. He says his conditioning is not where he would like it to be because of that, and he may have a sense of urgency. So the champion going down at 138 into round two from a right to the top of the head. All the more reason to attack. Big left hook. And a straight right hand and a big swing and a miss by Byron Mitchell. Byron Mitchell right now is getting, you know, he's not a seasoned pro like Frank Lyles. He's getting a little excited. He's telegraphing big time. He could walk into one doing that. Uh, he, he is going barroom. He, he's, he's winging big punches, but he's leaving himself wide open. Can't get too cutesy here. Not with this guy. Not with Frankie Lyles. A seasoned, experienced veteran like Frankie Lyles, a longtime champion. Mitchell's trainer told him to start moving under that right hook, and he did just a minute ago through right hand to the body, listening to his corner very well. Well, bopping some shots now up the face of Mitchell. Mitchell coming back, counters with a right. Mitchell apparently has a pretty good chin because he's going to be getting hit straight shots, hard shots. Oh, a big right hook there by Frankie Lyles off the head of Mitchell, but Mitchell again showing the good chin. Frankie Lyles has a tendency to when fighters are coming in low to pull him from behind the head, and that's why he winds up getting hit in the cup so often because he pulls him down with that right hand. Yeah, he feels that he is fouled frequently, but it's probably his own doing. Some of it is his doing. Mitchell answers his skeptics who feel he may not be ready for this jump because of his level of competition. Two good combinations, two good combinations. He says, I've sparred with world champions, top ten fighters. This is where I belong. Well, oh, wild swing and a miss, but he wasn't even close. He went big game hunting there, boys. Well, he, he went Hollywood on that one. That's Actually, it felt, it felt good here in the arena. Got, got a little air going. Frankie Lyle still appears to be somewhat lackluster. He doesn't have zip and power. He's moving while he's punching. That left hand, that straight, that clean, should have done more damage. I'll say this about the young Mr. Mitchell, not showing much respect for the champion. He says, I've always carried myself like a champion outside the ring, so I don't feel the pressure inside the ring. Byron Mitchell, the challenger in the blue. Well, after a great round of knocking down the champion, he gave a round back. Yep, he gave it away. Oh, a winging right hook there by Byron Mitchell right off the top of Lyle's head. And Lyle felt it all the way down to his heels. Wow, big shot. Give it a stool. I thought you were going to walk with the stool. Give it a stool. I thought you were going to walk with the stool, man. Damn. Man. You, come on. I'm going to work on that eye. Right on that eye. Take a deep breath. Three deep, baby. You've got to keep slipping inside. you got to go to the body and throw them punches straight. Understand? And put them together, okay? Right. Get some water for him, Jim. You're doing great. Okay. I need, we need combinations. Mitchell throwing his thudding shots. He is swinging for the rafters. Here's a big left hook high on the top of Frank Lyle's head. Sometimes when you hear those shots and they make a big thud, they're not that powerful. Here's another look. I'm going to the body with that big left right hand and the big left hook up top. Frankie's on the move, so that punch doesn't really have the effect it should. But it's getting his attention. It, it's getting Lyle's attention. He's fighting a little bit of caution in him, in him and he's not, he does not have the power. He does not have the power yet in that first round. He's still trying to recover from that knockdown. Byron Mitchell, 19-0 with 15 knockouts. His first world title shot. Trying to take the belt away from Frankie Lyles, who's held it since 1994. Mitchell, born in Orlando, Florida, lives in Ozark, Alabama. Rated number one by the WBA, despite the fact that he hasn't fought anybody up till now. But right now, he's proving that the people who've rated him in the top, at least top five, he's warranting that rating. But even at that, he hasn't really beaten anybody that's a proven fighter. I don't think number one, I think that was a little bit of a gift. 
Well, he's in the hunt now because he's even Steven with, with rounds of, on our my unofficial scorecard. And, and uh, I, I think this is up for grabs. This is certainly not going to be a one way fight. But I think Mitchell needs to do, he needs to work in behind that jab. He's not getting close enough to Frankie to be effective for enough of the round. He's not going to land those big shots that he's telegraphing and drop Frankie every other round. So he's got to work to win the round. Mitchell, the aggressor, coming forward, pressing the attack. Sometimes, sometimes in a, in a peculiar way, an early knockdown works against a young kid because he thinks, well, that's all I got to do is knock this guy down. He spends the rest of the fight looking for that knockdown and forgets to work for it. He's got to work for it with this guy. Wilds is not going to stand here and give him the title. It is a mandatory defense. Frankie Lyles in the white, a world champion who has fought in relative obscurity. But that is not to take away from his ring smarts, his courage, his speed, and power. The round is a little more than half over, and still Mitchell hasn't really done any work. He hasn't built on that knockdown. We approach the final minute of round four, scheduled for 12 for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship. Oh, oh a straight left hand, and then another left by Frankie Lyles. Effective punching. That was Frankie Lyles' best punch, and Mitchell showed no ill effects from it. But he's getting gone regularly, and that's a big point builder. Big point builder. Boy, he, he landed a whole load of shots and not nothing in return. Nothing in return from Mitchell. Big mouse uh, under the left eye of Byron Mitchell. Oh, that right hook. Mm -hmm. There's another straight left that got through the gloves of Mitchell. That left is going to be there all night. There's another one. If he can put some power in it, he can knock him out with that. And don't forget that nasty right hook that Lyles has as well. That's been a big knockout weapon. Well, Lyles is beginning to score at will here now. He has taken over command. He's taking the young fighter to school. Disappointing for Mitchell. Disappointing. Reach it down. Okay, Frankie. Okay, Frankie. Good round. Frankie, keep your hands up. Kind of move to the right. Make your keep the movements you're doing is good now. But you got to continue like you. Frankie Lyles executing very well here in this round. Getting his strength back. Double jab, left hand, right down the pipe. Follows up with another one. If Mitchell's going to give it to him, Frankie Lyles is going to take it. Here's an overhead look at it. And it's just very simple. It's just a one, two. Throws a jab, then another one, two, and one more. Comes right back. One, two. Jab, left hand. Very effective. Mitchell has got to make yeah, Frankie Lyles pay. He cannot taken. do that and win this fight. If you can't, I'm with the stick, the jab, if not jab. You're too far out. Watch the back of these rounds by points. You can't back up. At least they're giving him the right idea. They're losing the rounds by points. One wonders why Mitchell shut down the shop for that round. I mean, he just did nothing. Nothing. And he ate a lot of leather. I think he's still too excited about the power in his right hand. That's my honest opinion. Yeah, he's looking for that one bomb, but he, if he doesn't throw it, he ain't going to land it. Frankie Lyles being guided by former head coach of the 88 U.S. Olympic team, Kenny Adams, who had Roy Jones, Michael Carbajal, Riddick Bowe, Ray Mercer, Kennedy McKinney. Good group you just mentioned. We are told that was actually a 70-second break, so a little extra breather for the two fighters. Lyle's corner during and after round four told the champ to use the jab to slow him down, get busy, force him back, keep him in the center of the ring. Don't wait around, step around him, and, and Lyle's uh, heeding that advice nicely. See, Frankie Lyle's retreats very quickly. He's got long legs, and he takes big steps back, and he's hard to reach when he does that. Mitchell has to come behind two and three jabs, even if he just uses that little range finder he's got to be and step with it he's got to step with it or that right hand is never going to reach it Bernie, how's that uh, left eye look uh, it looks nasty it's, it's yeah. swollen it's going to get very swollen and, and for good reason it's getting popped over and over and over and over and this guy doesn't even try to defend it a series of straight left hands by frankie lyle's doing damage to the face of byron mitchell he's landing right on that spot right on that spot over and over and over again like a machine and Mitchell's trunks are beginning to slide a la Fernley Feliz. Well, Mitchell's corner better get telling him, hey, get under that and start fighting. 
He'll just stand there and take everything. There's a thing called a counterpunch in boxing. He tried just there, but it was a grazing blow. Well, his corner said to him, he's too far outside. You've got to get underneath to get inside. You've got to work. You can't stay out there. It's too too much range that Lyles has, and he's too effective from outside. Now step in. Now step in. Now step in. See? That's him go. He, he had him right on the ropes where he could work. Now step in. That right hand was blocked beautifully by Lyles. What? He has no chance from outside, but stepping in, he's got a beautiful chance. Because obviously the kid can punch him. Now. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Right. 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 Tell you what, Lyles can play both ends of the court. He can do defense. He's got some moves to avoid punches. But this is part of the reason some of his fights are so boring, is he'll do a little tap tap and he'll run around. When a guy comes in, he'll just hold him. Yeah, he doesn't see the need to get hit. I mean, if he can, with those big legs, if he can get away from a guy as soon as he advances, why do that? Then, then the guy stops, you come on and, and pound it like, like he's doing right now. He can win this fight just doing this. And that may be part of the reason for the fact that he hasn't gained the recognition outside boxing circles that he would get like. No, 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 That's not a knockdown. He said he's just content slip. with boxing That's soundly, whether it's a knockout or a decision. That's a slip. So he doesn't seem too intent on gaining the, the recognition. Frankie's found the way to win. Purely because Mitchell's you know, giving it to him. Away because you're waiting too, too long. Don't, no, you got the five when he five. You, you, you're yeah, not deep. Not hitting. You're not, no, but you're, you're not firing. It. You're not firing. You may think you are, but you, you're, you're not firing. You're not firing. You, you, you see that all like closing up. You, you, you're you're the, punches. getting you ugly in color punches. and ugly in size. But you drop you're the champion of the world. And here's one of the reasons why. As Mitchell's coming in, Frankie Lyles is being very effective with that jab. There's one in the face. There's another one with the left hand behind it. Not all of them are getting through, and a couple of the right hooks, I'm sure, land on that eye as well. He's just covering right now as Mitchell, and he's not really bringing in the offense. Here's an overhead shot. A little trip in the corner. Legs get tangled up. Frankie Lyles takes a seat. Round for a six. Interesting what they were telling Mitchell in the corner. He says, you may think you're firing punches, but you're not. You dropped the champion, but you aren't taking advantage of that. And the fact that he did drop the champion, you guys pointed out, may have been the worst thing that could have happened to him tonight. Yeah, he's looking for it again. He's looking for that one bomb that's going to do it, but he's not throwing the punches he needs to. There's no question about it. He needs to put combinations together and do it now. So, to, to point in, to, to go in with a jab is, is what he needs. Bobby pointed out that cuts the distance, but gets him in a position where he can punch, where he can go to it. He doesn't do it. He, one punch and out, and Frankie's gone. That's a follow, follow, follow. See, Mitchell can't just leap him with the big shots. He's not going to get home that way, and Frankie, once he leaps him, Frankie's just going to grab him and hold on. Well, still doesn't seem to have the pop, the power back in his punches, but a key to victory certainly will be to continue working that eye of Byron Mitchell. Lyles in the white trunks, Mitchell in the blue. This for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship. It's scheduled for 12 or almost halfway through. Well, I, I would not think anybody could take that uh, as much as he's landing that left hand for 12 rounds. I mean, at, at, in a little while, he's got to start fading with it. That's just too much left hand, too much power right in the face. There it is again. There is that the stinging jab. Is there a right hook? A right hook. By Frankie Lyles. Well, Mitchell not used to this. Most of his fights have ended uh, early. And he is concerned, he told us, with his conditioning. That's his biggest weakness. As long as he's going to take these shots, he might as well get off a couple. He's not really working here. He, I, I'm so, I really believe that that knockdown went to his head, and he cannot get refocused on what to do and where to work. The longest Mitchell has ever gone is eight rounds back in 97. He's had 11 first-round knockouts in his uh, 15 knockouts, 14 of his 15 KOs in three rounds or less. So this is a whole new ball game for uh, Mitchell. Do it again! 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 Do
He's never fought anybody the caliber of Frankie Lyles. Lyles is using him like, the, like a bag, like a punching bag. It's just bibbity bop, bibbity bop, bibbity bop, and, and move away when he wants. Oh. One one is doing the work, the other guy's doing nothing. Mitchell's doing nothing. He's literally just falling around taking some shots. Every once in a while he loads up with a big shot, and he needs to go back to school a little bit. I like to listen to the corner and hear what the heck they got to tell him because somebody's got to be telling him about cutting on the corner. Somebody's got to be telling him about how to step in and punch. I mean, he can't possibly not be getting instructions. In the last round, his corner said, you think you may, you may be think you're punching, but you're not punching at all. Final seconds of round six, another round that belongs to Frankie Lyles, who is uh, oozing with confidence right now, dancing around the challenger Byron Mitchell. Damn and showing no respect for the challenge. Okay, you're losing every round, man. Look here, what is he doing? He's not throwing no punching. You just follow the man oh, like, a, like a, he got it on a leech. Yep. Understand? You're waiting, you're inside, you're making a guy miss, and you ain't doing nothing. Come on now, let's get this shit together, man. You, come on, man. You, you come all the way here and want my knowledge. I, when you lose, I lose. I'm not a loser. What you see here, Frankie Lyle's on the right. He's got his, he's got his hand down, okay? That's his right hand, it's down. But he's using his jab all day long, all day long. Then he's falling straight through with the left hand as we roll the tape, and he's just doing it all day. There's the little jab, falls a little short. Left hand square in the right eye of Mitchell. And he's doing it all day. An effective jab has been very effective. He's swelling that eye, he's working that eye, he's getting points. That was one of the keys. He's gotta come out and establish that jab and set the pace. And the, and the unmarked face. Now Frankie Lyles tells the story. He's not getting hit. The other guy's getting clobbered. And the other face in yes. dramatic contrast. A contrast in results. We are halfway through the fight. One knockdown. It came back in round two. And believe it or not, if you're just joining us, it was the champion, Frankie Lyles, who went down right in front of us at the 138 mark from a right to the top of the head. But uh, the challenger, Mitchell, hasn't been able to capitalize on it since. And make no mistake, when he went down, he really went down, because he went down on his face. You don't go down on your face unless you're really hurt. It was a legit knockdown. And I got up from that, I don't know, but he got up, and uh, the other guy didn't know how to put him away. Mitchell has just not understood what to do. After six rounds, I have a five rounds to one, but only a three-point margin, 58-55, because of the knockdown. How about unofficially, Ferdy? 58-55, exactly. And, and it's exactly right. We're watching the same play. This is how the fans see it at home. Lyles up four rounds to two. Well, of course, uh, Mitchell took that second round when he knocked down Lyles. I can't someone remember someone gave him another round. Yeah, somebody I'm not another. sure which. I, it must have been oh, no, no, the no, first go. round or something, but I didn't, back, I didn't see it. Back. I didn't see it. Byron with a lot of relatives around the country tuning in on the internet. Let it go. You want, you, want your, you, you want to holler at this guy, but let it go. Let the right hand go. There, let it go. It would seem like he would get tired of holding his guard there in front of his face. We're told the online the viewers gave Mitchell rounds two, which we can understand, and round three, which is a little tough to understand. Yeah, yeah I can't I can't deal with that one. Right now, Frank Lyles is just doing business as usual as he has for the past three or four rounds. Bippin' and bopping punches off the face of Byron Mitchell. In jeopardy of losing his first fight in 20. Frankie Lyles, who we mentioned, trained by Kenny Adams, trained for much of his career by Freddie Roach from uh, Dedham, Massachusetts. Roach also trained former WBO champ Steve Collins. Straight right hand by Mitchell out of nowhere, and it stings Frankie Lyles. Yep, no, he, he buckled there. He got his attention pretty good with that right hand, but see, Frankie's a master holding on, and this is what he's going to do. He's going to run and hide, and he's hard to find when he goes into hiding. Well, this guy should be throwing something. Come on. He needs to work him on that jab again. Get Frankie in trouble again. Put a jab in his face. Give him something to worry about. The guy gets him in trouble. He doesn't throw any punches. What's the matter with him? Meanwhile, it's Lyles coming back. But again, not much zip on those punches. Nevertheless, offering them up. Almost to confirm that he was hurt. Because his punches are nothing now. Wow, this kid has got a lot to learn. As we head for the bell, and Lyles finishes strong. Yeah. Yeah, he's stumbling back now. He's stumbling back now. 
you got to keep moving to the right. That's the key point. Frankly, every time you step over here, sometimes we catch my right hand, right. okay? Right. That's, that's my point, okay? Come on, baby. What is it? Come on. I'm about to put this towel back here. Don't, 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 don't. Lyles gets rock with a right hand, but this is pretty much the only offense that was effective by Mitchell for the entire fight. There's a nice counter right hand, but no real effective follow-up whatsoever. Here's another look at it from behind Mitchell. And he lands a nice right hand, but Frankie Lyles is hard to hit clean too often. And the second shot, grazing, and after that, all misses. Or, or no throws at all. Right, Frankie, so we gotta move to your right. Okay. He's Frankie. looking for the counterpunch. He's looking for the counter every time, okay? Mouthpiece right. in. Finish with your punches right here. Keep your feet. Lyle's showing the good, the good chin. He can take a punch. And what he's showing is the uh, patience of a kung fu master. I mean, he is not in a hurry. He just keeps on biffing and bopping. He's satisfied to be here through 12 rounds and win this easy. Except this kid can explode on you. Well, he's, you know, he's reaching the point of no return. Yeah. We have seven rounds in the books, and the gap just keeps widening for Mitchell. He's got to do something. Yeah. Frankie Lyles, the third longest reigning champion in boxing today behind Ricardo Lopez and Felix Trinidad. He's held the title since 1994, but he has been fighting infrequently. Only four fights the last three and a half years. When Mitchell works in behind that jab, Steve, he's effective. He starts to land on Frankie. Frankie's got to get out of the way. The kid's too strong for Frankie. Frankie realizes that, so he moves off. But Mitchell normally, as he's doing now, doesn't really punch him. He doesn't chase him. He doesn't punch him. He doesn't attack. Attack, that's the word here that's missing. Mitchell uh, just seems very confused right now. Just can't get it together. Lyles is just too smart. He's outsmarting. Yep, there's an education going on here. It's, it's costly. Well, this is what they call going to school. The old, the old veteran takes you and shows you. Comes off the floor to do it. Yep. Which makes it even more of a lesson learned. Byron Mitchell has become a human punching bag. I just don't see how he takes all of that punishment without getting a little dizzy. I mean, they're not hard, but it's continuous. It never stops. Three minutes of every round. And then on top of it, he's got to listen to both. Oh, nice. But then a sneaky right hand out of nowhere once again by Mitchell. But doesn't follow it up. Right. And he should realize by now that the champion has a solid chin. Mitchell just said something, too. Yeah. I don't know what he said, but I think he was alluding to the fact that as soon as Frankie got hit, he found a way to grab Mitchell and tie him up. So you can't leap into Frankie because he'll just duck and, he'll just duck and tackle you. He'll just put his arms around you. And we saw that in the Tim Little's fight. See, he will just tie you up. Just tie you up. Final seconds of round eight. Another difficult round for the challenger. Touch gloves after the round and smile at each other. That's something I can never do again. I'm trying to beat the heck out of it. Maybe that's Lyle's way of saying the next round is the last. Let me, let me do all this. Look here. You're throwing one punch at a time. You're not cutting off the ring. You throw right hand every time you throw that jab. You, you got, you're not using your hook, and you got the best hook in the world. You're not using none of your weapons, okay? Byron, don't give in to you. Look, you're giving in to you. I'm not, to I'm not even okay. tired. But no, but then nobody can't find it. No, but no, no don't even do this to me. Don't even try to find it. Just let him go. Listen. Mitchell trying to get something going, get a little momentum, gets a combination together, and he hits a nice right hand to the body, and a left hook, and a right to the head. But as soon as he comes in, there's Frankie Lyles, duck and hold, duck and hold. You but, follow the man but don't instead yourself. of cutting them off. Right. You're jamming them yourself. Off. Tell him to the bottom. Now come on and do what I'm doing. Come on and work, Brown. Come on now. Come on, Brown. You're ahead of him. 
Well, this is the first time that uh, Byron Mitchell is past eight rounds. You can hear him in the corner saying, but I'm not even tired. You just can't find him. Well, it's almost a, uh, reached the point where it's a mathematical, almost a mathematical assurance that uh, unless he does something strange, he can't get out. He can't beat this guy. Well, I have him behind by five points with four rounds to go. That means he has to do something yeah, got a dramatic. Round. Something, yeah, just short of amazing. A couple of three-point uh, shots from the perimeter. Reggie Miller kind of shot. Not the Reggie Miller we ah, saw in this I series. I knew I'd get that something out of you. The old Knicks never died. But in the past, yes. <laughs> I agree with you. Jim Gray can certainly uh, solidify that. Yeah. We're riding with a thrilling mix. See, if he's not tired, he should just, you know, let it all go. Take a shot, gamble. Well, he's got to. He's getting to the point where there's, there's just no way to win this way. Man. There's a little aggression from Mitchell. But look how great, how great he eludes it. The champion just used those big, long legs to get out of there. It's not thrilling, exciting, but it's effective as far as uh, Lyles is concerned. It gets him, piles up the W's. Well, your heads inside, watch your heads. There's all but, types of boxing. This, this is a boxing lesson. This is Frankie Lyles, when he boxing. jabs too, you'll notice he jabs and he's moving backward. He's on a retreat to a degree. And Mitchell, when he's when he cuts his hands, cups his hands, excuse me, he just tries to stuff the punches over the top and he's not gonna reach. He's gotta walk through him or get inside him. He's gotta step to him and he's not. He's just trying to outreach Frankie. Frankie has the reach. And Lyle's using that uh, that bad eye of Mitchell as target practice. He's aiming for it. Mitchell missing wildly once again with a right hook. It was a left jab by uh, Mitchell coming around with a right hook there, but it missed. Okay, don't hold, don't hold. Those punches beginning to find a hole now by Mitchell a little more frequently. Because he's throwing them. I got a, a news for you. If you don't throw them, they don't land. Because he's throwing something. He's also stepping toward Frank Lau yep. Frank, excuse me, Frankie Lau. When he's on the outside, Mitchell cannot counter from outside. If he slips a punch away, he can't reach Frank. Mitchell has certainly perked up a little bit of a second win here. He did tell us his strongest asset is his inside game. Well, let's see more of it. Start paying up the tempo. We're paying a terrible price to get inside. Indeed. Look at his left eye. He's squinting now. He's really hurt. That's almost closed up completely. And once again, Lyles finding a home on that left eye. Put the, put the, just sit down. Just, just put on. Look at Baron. Why are you walking the man? It, man. No, 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 don't do that bullshit to me. That's all this bullshit, man. You can't feel it. What the hell are you in here for, then? This is not a matter of feeling. This is for the world championship. What the fuck are you doing, yeah, you're man? A championship. Come on, Baron. You look like amateur. Cool no, no, no. You, look here. You, you, don't, go, you ain't got. No, no, no. Go, no, no. Look here. Don't give me that. No, 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 no. Give me. You got the strength. Come on, Baron. You got it, baby. You got to get it out of here. Do you understand? The, heck, the championship of the world is running out through your fingers. You got to get busy you now. Gotta, you got to go inside wait. yourself, Baron. You can't wait. Come on, man. Go inside yourself. Remember, I told you somewhere you ain't never been. Remember, I told you somewhere you ain't never been. Now you got to go, man. Come on, man. You understand? Don't Come on, Baron. Do it for your son. Do it for nobody else, man. Come on, man. No, you don't need no water. He ain't no water. Come on, get out of here. Go earn some water, baby. Are we watching an old John Garfield movie? No, let me movie? tell you, that was so good, Bobby had his jacket off. Bobby wants to go finish the fight. That's psyched up. Now, even Bobby Choppy. got psyched up out there. Got Jimmy, all revved up. I'm in a fight mood. I'm bullet. Jimmy Williams and Newt Rockney working the corner of Byron Mitchell. I'm ready to go take this guy on. What Come a on, speech. It's the title, for God's sake. Come on. Well, before the fight, Lyles told us that at this stage of his career, he doesn't have to go for the knockout. And tonight, he does seem content to win a 12-round decision, which seems to be uh, where we're headed. Unless, again, something dramatic happens, unforeseen. We hit round 10, double figures. There you go. That's the kind of meaningful punch you got to put in. And that's how he has to do it. He has to slip step to the inside. Step two, Frankie Lyles. He cannot count in from outside. He's too fast. 
His arms are too long. He's got too good a rhythm. And the first good hard shot to anything that he landed in the, in the last several rounds. Uh, let go, get those. Let go, let go. A fight when you get out. Take advantage. Act like this is a fight. Now there, you got him. Oh man. I would have taken a shot of something. I got to be honest. Oh man, he was right there. He, 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 he waits. He waits to get inside. He's inside. He doesn't throw. He lets the guy walk out. Staying too far away, staying on the outside. He has got to close that gap, or he'll never even have a chance closing the show. 34-year-old Frankie Lyles is taking 25-year-old Byron Mitchell to school. Mitchell began boxing at 16, won a Golden Gloves national title in 96. 105 and 14 as an amateur. One year away from a degree in sports medicine and nutrition at Northern Michigan. Turned to boxing full time after completing three uh, years. Frankie Lyles, aside from fighting, owns a car dealership in Michigan. Part time model and actor when he lives out in LA. But he says, make no mistake, I box full time. And he's boxing full time, full -time right, now. right now. I was just all about to say. All over Mitchell. Oh, oh, nice shot. A roundhouse left by Mitchell again out of nowhere. And Mitchell on the attack, but doesn't follow it up. But throw it. I mean, he got him good. I mean, that, that was a resounding shot. He has to follow it now. But one and done. He's been, he's been a problem all night. One and done. Bobby, at least throw something. Come on, man. Come on. I completely agree with you, Freddie. You don't have to sell me. I'll be, I'm on your side. Under 10 seconds in round 10. Throw it. Very reluctant, Byron Mitchell. There. Oh, there's one. A right hook right off the side okay. of Lyles' head just before the bell. Boy, we could have done that. Now, if you do that in the beginning of the round, you'd have to. Yeah. Frank, you can wait until the last <laughs> minute. Jump on that arm. Understand? We could have done wait that until the, the last minute punch. Start off early throwing punches, okay? You, you only got six got, You got minutes. six minutes. And I don't and this go, is I want you to throw punches for six minutes. Is this your legacy? You want what to go out this way? You throw legacy one punch every time. time. You do what you hit at the end hold, of the hold, hold it, hold it just a minute. Hold, let me see. You got it. Go. No, 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 this go, is Jimmy. You're throwing one punch at a time. I taught you combinations. Where is the hook? You, you're throwing the right hand and I finish off the hook. You're not going to the body. You got Here's that left hook that started to get his momentum a little bit. Lyle throws the nice right hand, excuse me, left hand, and he counters it with a beautiful left hook. But again, Frankie Lyles is on the retreat. Mitchell's got to stay on top. Here comes the right hand toward the end of the fight. That was a little bit low. Followed with a hook. That was borderline on the belt line. We could we, we'll let him get away with that one. I think there's still concern in the corner of Frankie Lyles. There's a couple of those shots banging around like that. At the beginning of the round, may get you in trouble, and then it's, and there he is. He just hit him again on the left hook. The championship rounds, round 11. That's corner told him. Now you don't don't throw it at the end. Throw it at the beginning. There you go. Oh, straight right oh, in. There oh, goes Miles. Oh, brother! That's a flash knocked out. He got up quickly. Frankie's okay, but this is what this is what Mitchell needed to do. This is what his corner told him. Start at the beginning. Well, he's got him now, boy. If he doesn't go at him now. He is crazy. That occurred 20 seconds into round 11. Let's see if he can continue the attack. That's it. Let's his straight right. He's got Lyles in trouble again. Lyles down to his Lyles down again. Remember, the three knockdown rule is in effect. Six, seven. And that's the second eight, knockdown eight, of the round. Let's go, Frank. One more knockdown. It's automatically over. We'll have a new champion. So the first knockdown, 20 seconds into round 11. The second, 53 seconds into round 11. There's still over a minute and a half left. Oh! Where you go, Frank? It's, it's over. It's over. We've got a new champion. It's Byron Mitchell. Two upsets and two uh, nights of fighting. And that was about to be a 10-6 round in a minute. Exactly. 
What a shot, and he did what we all said he should have done all along. He likes to punch. punch. The three knockdown rule is an aberration here in Massachusetts. Under the unified rules, there is no three knockdown rule, but they made the change heading into this fight tonight. I got news for you, Steve. We were about to see four, five, or six knockdowns if that continued. And after four knockdowns, I don't think any referee in the world could let a fight keep going. So I, I agree there with was that. plenty of time, and Frankie was hurt. The kid's power was the difference. He was, he was three. There was three knockdown. The kid was really on fire. He's in power now. The, now Frankie doesn't have the ability to get away from the punches because he's hurt. Now comes damage. Now comes a knockout to ten. A changing of the guard. Byron Mitchell pulls off the upset. We'll take a look at how it happened. Three knockdowns. The three knockdown rule being in effect tonight because of the change in the rules. But I think it was probably academic. I think he would have gone down more. I, I one of those knockdowns I'm not so sure of. I mean, the, well, the here's the first one. one. It's a little bit of a trip, and there's a little bit of a, there's a but left a good hand. shot. See, his legs weren't under him, but it was a good, clean right. left hook, that, right that hand. Okay. That was okay. It's the second one that I thought he sort of collapsed. He got pushed down. Second knockdown, he, he works. Mitchell works him into the corner, and he's hitting him. And now, Frankie Lau, see, wa now watch him push. Well, watch him push. See that? Frankie Lau, you know what? Frankie just took the knee. Frankie took the knee. Exactly right. That's that's a knockdown. I know. Unfortunately, I've had to do that once in a while myself. Bobby, you're still doing it, but, but uh, you're doing a great job on this replay. So let's go to the third one. Last knockdown. This is a very good right hand. It opens up a big cut over Frankie's right eye too. There it is, right there. Got land in the corner of the eye. You'll see when his head comes up. There's bleed. There's blood there. He's bleeding, and it hurt him. He, you can see his leg shake. He really, really was not. Good at that time. And, and you spotted a cut there, Bobby. I, I didn't spot it right there, but he had a cut. Yeah, he did. He got, him, he got the third knockdown, the last right hand. He hit him right in the corner of that eye. One more. Well, we'll get the official word from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of 1 minute 17 seconds in round number 11 with the three knockdown rule in effect here in the state of Massachusetts. Our referee in charge, Jerry Leone, stops the contest. The winner by way of knockout, still undefeated, and the new WBA super middleweight champion of the world, Byron Mitchell. Lyles was probably ahead on all three judges' scorecards, but uh, we'll wait and see uh, when we get the official uh, tally. The relatively unknown, unheralded Byron Mitchell dethrones longtime champion Frankie Lyles, who had held the belt since August of 1994. Lyles unsuccessful in his eighth title defense, his first loss in nine world title bouts. Let's go up to Jim Gray. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Byron, it looked as though you were hesitant to throw a punch the entire fight. You probably lost nine of the 11 rounds, right. and then you came out of nowhere. Why such inactivity? Because I knew I was behind, and and I just, I, I had to, we, we worked hard in camp. Tony Otarver, uh, Jimmy Williams, uh, Larry Berrien, we, we all worked hard in the gym, and they, they, they got me in the best shape of my life. It's just, you know. Why not throw any punches, though? I had, until, to find until the last I had to find myself because I lost focus in the beginning, you know, after Frankie hit me with a, a good left hand and it, it messed up my eye and I, I felt it right away. And that kind of threw me off track because I wasn't ready for it. But, you know, I just kept digging deep and kept digging deeper and I found myself again. Were you surprised with what occurred there in the 11th round? No, I knew it could happen. I just, you know, hate I had to take the punishment. You know, before it happened, I should have. And how is your eye? Because it does look like it has been yeah, punished. Very good, don't you? Very yeah. good. How is your eye? Oh, it's 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 okay. It's just uh, a little swollen. I'm. In the fight yeah, you know, yeah, this happens all the time. I, I've given many, and now it's my turn to receive. I know, you know, what what goes around comes back around again. Would you fight Frankie again? Yes, I would. Do you feel as though you benefited from the rules here in Massachusetts because in, in most fights uh, in almost any other place, the three knockdown rule has been waived. Right. You feel you benefited? Oh, uh, yeah, I think I benefited, but you know, the inevitable is gonna happen anyway. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right, congratulations. Let's now bring in Frankie. Frankie, God bless you. it appeared as though you were dominating this entire fight. You went down in the second round. 
And then in the 11th round, what was it? Was it was it rustiness? Was it lack of concentration? What would you attribute this to? Fatigue, and then I just didn't listen to the instructions of the corner. First of all, I'd like to say happy belated birthday to my mom. Happy birthday to Mr. Hubbard tomorrow. And Vince Gilray and the rest of the crew in Vegas. Uh, fatigue is what got to you? I, you know, I did a lot to lose the weight, so I think that contributed to the to the um, me laxing up in the late part of the fight. But I can't take anything away from him. He's a good, young, strong guy. You know what I mean? He kept the pressure on. He did what he, supposed, he was supposed to do. He listened well to his corner. Were you surprised that he refused to throw punches almost the entire fight? Were you surprised at his inactivity? One more time. Were you surprised at his inactivity and lack of throwing punches almost the entire fight? Well, no, nah, because I knew, I, like I said, I felt that I had him. You know, Michael Nunn did the same thing with uh, James Tony. you know, so I just got careless and he caught me in the end. So, you know, like I said, I had to take my hat off to him. Do you want to fight him again? Oh, no doubt. I'm a true champion. I fight against anybody. I never ducked anybody. So, yeah, I like to do it again. But providing Don King gives me another opportunity. Were you rusty? You have had just one fight in two years. I don't think that contributed to it. Like I said, it was, it was a year since I made, over a year since I made the weight. And I did so much to make the weight. And like I said, I have a great corner. Shadi Saluki, Ruben Gomez, Luis Spada, uh, Coach Adams, my brother Keith, cousin Fred. So everybody worked diligently to keep me, get me in shape and get me together. And it, when I got in the ring, it was my turn to step things up. And at the end of the fight, I didn't have a left. I just kept trying to push. Final thought, how difficult is it going to be for you to live with this based on the fact that you dominated this fight with the exception of a few punches? Not at all, because I'm a survivor, and I'll come back stronger next time, so it's no big thing. I got a great group of people working with me, so nobody gives up on me, and we're going to still continue to stay with it. Okay, Frankie, thank you. Appreciate it, Jim. All right. Let's send it back to you, Steve. All right, uh, Jim, a class act. Uh, Frankie allows his first loss since 92 to Tim Littles, his only other defeat. Byron Mitchell remains undefeated, 20-0 with 16 knockouts. Uh, championship belt switching hands for the second straight month here on, on Showtime. Lyles was ahead on all three uh, official judges' scorecards, 98-91, 98-92, 98-91. And as far as the online scoring results from our main event, here's how it uh, looks. Frankie Lyles was ahead eight rounds to three before he was put down by virtue of the three knockdown rule. If we, if you took part, we thank you for your participation. Well, we'll start with the fight, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. Quite a surprise here tonight. It was. Uh, I'll take the heavyweights first and get to this later. The, the heavyweights was predictable. Uh, Ruiz had his tough night cut out. He did his work well. He knocked out his man. He got, he got to where he, he wanted to go. This was an, a limited, uh, as we said at the beginning, a limited upset. Yes, it was an upset, especially since it was 98-91 uh, going into the final thing. But we knew this kid could punch. We knew he could punch. And this, folks, is boxing. That's what makes it so good. A guy could be losing all the way down to the home stretch. And yeah, bingo, he, he hits the three-pointer. And we're at home with a new champion. Yeah, I, I did say surprise. But as we turn back over to Bobby Chez, I didn't really mean by the fact that this was an upset tonight. I meant because of the flow of the fight, because we all said going into this fight that this kid Mitchell had a chance to win, and he did. Well, he really did have a chance to win. I think he proved that very early on. He had the tools. He had the power to get to Frankie Lyles, but he lost focus after the knockdown, and also, as he said, a good shot to the eye. It bothered him. He got flustered. He couldn't focus. He couldn't get the focus back. You know, he caught up with himself late, but ooh, ooh, he, was, he was cutting ooh. it close. I'll tell you what. Well, let's uh, go back and take a look at the highlights of tonight's uh, action from Wilmington, Massachusetts, just outside Boston. We'll start off with the Ruiz Police fight. Uh, again, the, the hard work of uh, Ruiz paid off. The, the kid really wasn't in his class. He was good to stand up and take the punishment he needed. It's a good tune-up fight, and that is what this we saw, a tune-up fight. Bobby. And the main event, Byron Mitchell stepped up to the level of competition. Well, I'll tell you what, Byron Mitchell had a lot of flaws here tonight. Frank exposed a lot of them, but he is a work in progress, and I think this kid has some real ability to want to do some great things in the division. He's got the power. He showed a pretty good chin. Frankie hit him clean an awful lot. Shows good speed and movement. I think he's going to be a force to reckon with for quite some time. Four knockdowns, including three that ended the fight with the three-knockdown rule in round 11. The new champion, a perfect 20-0 with 16 knockouts from Ozark, Alabama. There he is, Byron Mitchell. Well, first it was Ruiz over Feliz, as hometown favorite John the Quiet Man Ruiz hopes to now make some noise in the heavyweight division. And in the main event, undefeated but unheralded Byron Mitchell, stunning longtime champion Frankie Lyles, second major upset within two months here on Showtime. First time in nearly five years that Lyles cannot be called champion.
Once again, we'll present a five-fight SCT pay-per-view event headlined by the always exciting WBA Bantamweight champion Johnny Tapia versus Pony Ayala on Saturday, June 26th at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Then a month later on Showtime Championship Boxing, we'll present a doubleheader featuring IBF Junior Welterweight Champion Teron Millette versus Virgil McClendon, as well as the WBA Welterweight Championship with title holder James Page. Catch this action Saturday, July 24th at the special time of 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on Showtime. Then two weeks later on Saturday, August the 7th on SCT Pay-Per-View, an exciting card highlighted by former IBF heavyweight champion Francois Botha facing Shannon Briggs. And also WBO junior featherweight champion Marco Antonio Barrera takes on number three contender Angel Vasquez. That's Saturday, August 7th at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, live on SCT Pay-Per-View. That'll do it for another edition of Showtime Championship Boxing. We hope you enjoyed it. See you again in two weeks. For the Fight Doctor, Freddy Pacheco, Bobby Chess, Jim Gray, our entire crew, Steve Albert saying so long from Wilmington, Massachusetts.